Well, Alice started rambling through the woods, and she thought, well, I've often seen a cat without a grin. But a grin without a cat? Why, that's the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. Alice waited. All in the golden afternoon, full leisurely we'd lied. For both our oars with little skill, by little arms applied. While little hands make vain pretense our wanderings to guide. She thought it must be the house of the March Hare, because the chimney was shaped like an ear and the roof was thatched with fur. It was so large. Thus grew the tale of Wonderland, thus slowly, one by one, its quaint events were hammered out. And now the tale is done. After presenting prizes to the animals in the caucus race and listening to the mouse's tale, Alice found herself alone on the bank of the pool of tears. The white rabbit, mistaking her for his housemaid, had sent her on an errand. She had grown enormously, then been besieged in the rabbit's house until she eventually managed to escape into the woods. Here she met an elderly caterpillar who seemed intent upon offering her good advice. Hmm. What size do you want to be? Oh, I'm not particular as to size. Only one doesn't like changing so often, you know. I don't know. Are you content now? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. But it, oh, oh, it, it is a very good height indeed. I am exactly three inches high. But I'm not used to it. You'll get used to it in time. One side will make you grow taller, and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? Of the mushroom. I try. That must have been the wrong one. got to. And oh, my poor hands. How is it I can't see you? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, serpent! I'm not a serpent. Leave me alone. Serpent? I say it again. You're a serpent. You shall not have my eggs. I haven't the least idea what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you have. I've tried the roots of trees, and I've tried banks, and I've tried hedges, but there's no getting away from you, serpents. As if it wasn't trouble enough hatching the eggs, but I must be on the lookout for serpents, night and day. Why, I haven't had a wink of sleep these three weeks. 
I'm very sorry you've been annoyed. And just as I'd taken the highest tree in the wood and I was thinking I would be free of them at last, they come wriggling down from the sky. Oh, oh, serpent, serpent! But I'm not a serpent, I tell you. I'm a... I'm a... Well, what are you? I can see you're trying to invent something. I... I'm a little girl. A likely story indeed. I've seen a good many little girls in my time, but never one with such a neck as that. No, 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 no. You're a serpent. I suppose you'll be telling me next that you never tasted an egg. I have tasted eggs, certainly. But little girls eat eggs quite as much as serpents do. I don't believe it. But if they do, why then? They're a kind of serpent. That's all I can say. You're looking for eggs. I know. I know that well enough. And what does it matter to me whether you're a little girl or a serpent? It matters a good deal to me. But I'm not looking for eggs as it happens. And if I was... I shouldn't want yours. I don't like them raw. Oh, well, be off then, be off! do to come upon them this size. Why, I should frighten them out of their wits. From the Queen, an invitation to the Duchess to play croquet. sort of use in knocking and that for two reasons first because I'm on the same side of the door as you are secondly because they're making such a noise inside no one could possibly hear you please then how am I to get in there might be some sense in your knocking if we had the door between us for instance, if you were inside, you might knock and I could let you out, you know. But how am I to get in? I shall sit here till tomorrow. Or the next day, maybe. How am 
am I to get in? Are you to get in at all? That's the first question, you know. It's really dreadful, the way all the creatures argue. It's enough to drive one crazy. I shall sit here, on and off, for days and days. But what am I to do? Anything you like. Oh, there's no use talking to him. He's perfectly idiotic. And that's a fact. Oh, please mind what you're doing. I'll be careful of the baby. Everybody minded their own business. The world would go round a deal faster than it does. Which would not be an advantage. Just think what work it would make with the day and night. You see, the world takes 24 hours to turn round on its axis. Or is it twelve? Talking of axes... <laughs> Chop off her head! <laughs> the only way to sue the mistress sing to him! Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes! He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. I speak severely to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes for he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he pleases. Here, you nurse it. I must go and get ready to play croquet with the queen. If I don't take this child away with me, they're sure to kill it in a day or two. Wouldn't it be murder to leave it behind? Don't grunt. That's not at all a proper way of expressing yourself. Perhaps it was only sobbing. If you're going to turn into a pig, I'll have nothing more to do with you. Now what am I to do with this creature when I get it home? If it had grown up, it would have made a dreadfully ugly child. But it makes rather a handsome pig, I think. Quite a lot of children that I know might do very well as pigs. Oh. Oh, the Cheshire Cat. Could you please tell me which way I ought to walk from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I really don't find where. Then it doesn't matter which way you walk. So long as I get somewhere. Oh, you're sure to do that. 
if you only walk long enough. Thank you for your advice. What sort of people live about here? In that direction lives a hatter. And in that direction lives a March Hare. Visit either if you like. They're both mad. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. We're all mad here. <laughs> I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad? You must be or you wouldn't have come here. And how do you know that you're mad? Well, to begin with, a dog's not mad. You grant that. I suppose so. Well then, you see, a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. But I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. I call it purring, not growling. Call it what you like. Will you be playing croquet with the Queen today? I should like it very much. But I haven't been invited yet. You'll see me there. Oh! By the by, what became of the baby? I'd almost forgotten to ask. It turned into a pig. I thought it would. <laughs> before, the March Hare will be much the most interesting. And this May, perhaps it won't be quite so mad as it was in March. Um, did you say pig or fig? I said pig. And I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. You make one quite giddy. All right. I've often seen a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat, it's the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. This must be the March Hare's house, but I think I'd better grow a little first. I'd gone to see the Hatter instead. Very uncomfortable for the Dormouse. Only, as it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. No room! No room! No room! There's plenty of room. Have some wine. I don't see any wine. Well, there isn't any. No, no, there isn't any. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it. Oh! It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited. I didn't know it was your table. It's laid for a great many more than three. Your hair wants cutting. You should learn not to make personal remarks. It's very rude. Take some more tea. I've had nothing yet, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take less? It's uh, very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion. Who's making personal remarks now? Why is a raven like a writing desk? I believe I can guess that. <laughs> Do you mean that you think you can find out the answer to it? 